Welcome everyone and thanks for watching this tutorial on e3d.com. My name is Simon Fuchs and I'm going to show you how to create a realistic glass texture in CryEngine. I'll explain how to create a detail bump in Photoshop and Crazy Bump to mimic the behavior of realistic glass and how to set up the shader in CryEngine. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at how glass behaves in real life. Let's look for an image at Google, so just type in glass facade reflections. Set the image size to large and look for a good image. As you can see in this image, the reflection is not 100% perfect like on a mirror, but it is distorted due to the glass being slightly bent and curved. We can mimic this behavior in any game engine by using a detail bump map. To create a detail bump map that achieves this effect, create a new image with a resolution of 512 by 512 pixels. Make sure that your background and foreground colors are set to black and white, and then go to Filter, Render, and select Clouds. This creates an image with a cloudy pattern that we can modify further. Go to Image, Adjustments, and then select Levels, and modify the outer sliders to increase the contrast in your image. I want to soften the transition from black to white in this image by adding a Gaussian Blur filter. If I would apply the filter to this image right now, I would destroy the tiling in the texture. In order to prevent this, just create a new image with double the resolution of the original one. Select everything in your image and copy it. Create a new image and set the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Paste it one final time and fill the foreground layer with white. Select your four original layers and merge them down to one layer. To do this, just select all of them in the layer palette and press Ctrl E on your keyboard. Select the background layer and apply a Gaussian Blur filter with a radius of 15 to soften the transitions from black to white. Select the fifth layer that I just created by Ctrl left clicking on it in the layer palette and then copy your selection while having the background layer selected and move on to Crazy Bump. In Crazy Bump, click on Open and then select Paste Height Map from Clipboard. Change the preview mode from Ball to Box and then adjust the normal map settings. Leave the very fine detail slider at 0 and reduce the fine detail slider from 99 to 0. Set medium detail to 50 and increase the very large detail slider to 99. This represents your bent glass surface and can be used as a detail bump map in CryEngine. Save your normal map to file by clicking on Save and then selecting Save Normal Map to File. Just save it in a temporary file on your desktop. Go back to Photoshop and open the file that you just saved. Apply an offset filter by clicking on Filter other and then offset. As you can see, the texture is tiling perfectly. Save your file for CryEngine. Just click on File, Save As, select CryTiff plugin as format and then go to your CryEngine 3 SDK directory. Go into the Game folder, then into the Objects folder, into the Glass Example folder and then save it as glass underscore detail bump underscore ddn dot tiff. The Crytiff plugin will now pop up. Set Preset to Normal Map Low Quality, as the Normal Map doesn't really contain enough subtle curvature information to justify using the High Quality Preset. Set Reduce Resolution to 1 to ensure that CryEngine uses the Detail Bump Map in a resolution of 256 by 256 pixels. Press OK to save your file and the Resource Compiler will now generate the Crytiff file that we can use in CryEngine. Open the CryEngine 3 SDK and load the forest level. To do this, just click on File, select Open, go into your Game folder, into the Levels folder, into the Forest folder and select Forest.cry. As you can see, I've already opened the level, so there's no need to open it again. Let's go to a spot where we can see our object a bit better. This here seems perfect. Just click on Brush, go to the Objects folder, to the Glass Example folder and then drag in your Glass Example model file into the scene. Close the roll-up bar to get some more screen space. As you can see, the object is showing a red replace me texture. The reason for this is that it has no material assigned. To assign a material, I need to open the material editor. Press M on your keyboard to open it. In this area here, right-click and select Add new multi-material. Enter the game folder, then the objects folder, 
then the glass example folder and create a material called glass.mtl. Click on save and the material appears in the material editor. Our object is using three different material IDs, so we need to make sure that our multi-material has three sub-material IDs as well. Right click on the material, click on set number of sub-materials and enter three. As you can see, the editor just created a glass material file with three sub-materials. To assign the glass material to the object, select it and click on the Assign Items to Selected Objects button. Don't worry about the fact that the object turned transparent. It will automatically be fixed when changing the shader settings. Select the first material ID and press F2 on your keyboard. Rename it to Proxy. The first material ID is used by the collision geometry, so set the shader to No Draw and the surface type to Metal to ensure that the object will show metal decals when shot. Select the second submaterial ID, right click, select Rename and enter Frame. Next, we need to load the textures for the metal frame of the object. In the Diffuse slot of the Texture Maps tab, click on the button with the three dots. Go into the Glass Example folder and select the tile-diff.tiff file. Load the specular map as well by selecting the tile-spec.tiff file. Load the normal map by selecting the tile-ddn.tiff file. As you can see, all of the three maps have now been loaded. The shader settings are still wrong and we are going to address that in a second. Load an environment map first, so that the object will show reflections of the scene. Click here, go into your game folder, then into the textures folder, then into the forest folder, and then select one of the cube maps in here. The best one is the one called cubemap underscore forest underscore a underscore cm dot dds. To ensure that the shader is loading the cube map, go to the shader generation params and enable the environment map checkbox. Let's adjust the lighting settings so that the shader looks better. For the diffuse color, we need to choose a color that is a lot darker than the current one. Set it to 90, 90 and 90. For the specular color, choose a dark color as well, but tint it slightly blue. Increase the glossiness to get sharper reflections and add a detail bump map. Go to the Detail slot and load a texture. Go to the Textures folder, then into the Detail folder and select Detail underscore Metal underscore DDN dot DDS. Enable Detail Bump Mapping in the Shader Generation params by clicking on the Detail Bump Mapping checkbox. Take a closer look at the object to actually see the Detail Bump Map effect. The Detail Bump Map is skewed right now because we are using a non-uniform texture. To adjust this, set the Detail Tiling U and Detail Tiling V shader settings to values that compensate for the texture. 5 and 1 seem to work very well. To mask your Detail Bump Maps, just enable the Detail Map Mask in Diffuse Alpha checkbox in the Shader Generation params. Since the bolts are masked in the Alpha channel of the Diffuse Map, they are not using Detail Bump Mapping anymore. Let's zoom out again and modify the shader settings for the glass surface. Select the third submaterial ID, right click and select Rename. Call it Glass. The next step is to load in the textures for the glass surface. Go to your glass example folder and choose glass underscore diff dot tiff as diffuse map. Choose glass underscore spec dot tiff as specular map. The glass surface does not have a unique normal map. Go to the environment slot next and load in the same cube map that we used on the metal frame. Next, adjust the lighting settings. Choose 80 as diffuse color and choose 62 as specular color. You could tint the specular blue as well if you wanted to. Since glass has really sharp reflections, increase the glossiness to 200. Right now, the glass is not showing any reflections at all because we did not enable the environment map checkbox in the shader settings yet. Go to the shader generation params and enable the checkbox. 
As you can see, the object is now showing a reflection of the cube map. The higher the glossiness value, the smaller your highlight and the sharper your reflections will appear and vice versa. Decrease the opacity for the glass to make it transparent. The glass surface is already looking fairly convincing, but it is lacking the distorted normals effect that I've showed you in the beginning of this tutorial. In order to enable the effect, load the detail bump map that we've created in Photoshop into the detail bump map slot. Enable detail bump mapping in the shader generation params. The effect is now enabled and the detail bump map is distorting the reflections, which makes our object look a lot nicer. Since we are using a non-uniform texture as diffuse texture for the glass, we need to adjust the detail tiling U and detail tiling V values again. Scale them down to 0.25 and 0.5. This is looking fairly convincing, but the effect is a bit too strong. So just turn down the intensity of the detail bump mapping a bit. A detail bump scale of 0.75 looks good. I think this is pretty convincing for a glass surface. Let's look at the object again with the effect disabled. You can use this technique for all kinds of reflective surfaces that are not perfectly flat and give them a more realistic look. Glass, metal and other surfaces with a high glossiness value will benefit from this effect quite a bit. Feel free to play around with different detail bump maps and different shader settings. Thanks for watching this tutorial.